Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here with another Network Knowledge Quickie. Today's video I want to talk about 10 cool tips and tricks for Cisco network engineers. I think this is going to be useful for folks who are either new to the industry and maybe it will show them some new things that they aren't familiar with. And it might be good for some folks who've been around for a minute like myself and help you relearn some things that you might have forgotten along the way. So two things before we start. If this is your first time watching the channel, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell down below. Second thing, we're going to jump in and do our network knowledge brain gains question of the day. So if this is your first time uh, watching the channel and seeing our network knowledge brain gains question of the day, really what this is is we just go over a, a cool question related to network stuff uh, at the beginning of the video and then uh, at the end of the video we'll go over the answers. It'd be really, really cool if you take uh, what you think the answer might be and put it in the comments down below. Uh, I'll pick out some, some folks who do that to get some cool JBC sticker swag. So here we go, here's our question. If you have a network of 192.168.0.0 with a subnet mask of 255.255.252.0, which of the following can be used for host IP addresses? And so there's four different options there, and you can pick any of those. It could be one, it could be multiple. Take whichever ones you think it would be, comment down below, and we'll see you at the end of the video. All right, so the first tip and trick of the day for Cisco configurations is a really cool command that I use sometimes, especially when I need to set a whole bunch of uh, interfaces back to the original uh, factory defaults. And that is the default interface command. And so pretty much, you can put that on any interface. Let's say you have to go and change a whole bunch of stuff. You gotta remove some VLANs and some switch port configurations and some spanning tree configurations. Just doing this default command will set everything back to originally how it was when you got uh, the new Cisco device right out of the box. The cool thing with this and how it becomes more beneficial is when you're able to use it with the range command. And if you don't know what the range command is, we're about to cover that in tip number two. So as I said, tip number two, the range command. What the range command does, it allows for you to take the same configurations and apply it across multiple interfaces at the same time. This command will save you so much time, it's not even funny. I, I use this every single day. Whenever I have to push out uh, a lot of commands to multiple interfaces, whether or not it's you know adding VLANs across a whole group of interfaces or resetting port security or... I mean, anything you can think of that you want to do across um, multiple ranges of commands, this interface range command is, is going to save you so much time. All right, tip number three, the question mark command. Now, for folks who are new to uh, the Cisco devices and network engineering, this is going to be one of the first commands that is really going to be the most beneficial for you. And what the question mark command does is allows you to see what other commands are available given the current string of commands that you've already input. So if we take a look at the example here and I typed in the ping command and I hit question mark, what it's going to do is it's going to show you all of the available commands that are there to complete or finish my command. So in this case, it would allow me to enter an IP address, it would allow me to enter a word, which really that would be if we were trying to ping something using a DNS name, that would make sense, or if I was going to do something with uh, a multicast ping. The really cool thing with this command, besides when you already know what it is that you're kind of trying to do, but you just don't remember the command, is that it also allows folks to kind of dig around the device and see what types of commands and capabilities are there. And oftentimes I find myself doing that if I get a new version of software or a new type of Cisco device, I might just kind of start doing question mark right from, from the beginning just to see what's available and then pick a, a command string and enter that and then keep, 
you know, adding question marks to kind of see and build out that command, uh, command string tree, if you will, of different things that are available to do on the device. So definitely, if you want to be a little bit more inquisitive, this is kind of a, a cool thing that you can do. Tip number four. So the show login command is what we're going to use most of the time whenever we want to look at uh, the logs that are on the device. And that's cool, but it's really hard to either, A, identify the particular things that you're trying to find, especially if it's a really, really giant log file. I mean, if you have thousands and thousands of lines of logs in there and you're just looking for a particular IP address, it's going to be really hard to find that. So if you do a show logging and pipe and question mark, when you do that question mark, it's going to give you a list of other types of commands that you can do with the show logging. So for instance, um, the grep command, uh, I use that all the time, super, super useful. What that's going to do is allow you to find a certain uh, matching pattern. So if I wanted to find a particular IP address or a host name or search on the keyword deny or permit or something like that, the, the grep command is going to be really, really useful. Um, you can use the begin command to look for lines that uh, begin with the, the keyword that we're looking for. You can use the last command to go all the way to the end of the file. Um, there's a lot of options. I actually didn't include all of them here on the screenshot, so definitely give this command a try. Take a look and see what's there, and I'm sure that you'll find something useful to help you out in parsing through the logs that are on your device. Tip number five. So as we know, the, the show run command is what we're going to do when we want to see the running configuration file on the device. That's great, except if you have a really, really big configuration file and you don't want to keep hitting the space bar to kind of keep going down to find uh, all the particular things that you want. Or if you want to see uh, different commands that are kind of uh, grouped together from the perspective of talking about the same type of thing. So in this case, uh, let's say we wanted to see stuff that was related to AAA. So the show run pipe section command allows you to find not only all of the commands that are using the string AAA, but it also adds context to your search. So it will show you all of the sub-configurations that go along with the other commands that are using the AAA. So in this instance, really the, the benefit here is that it's picking up on all of the server commands and use VRF management command underneath the AAA group server radius command. And I wouldn't be able to see that unless I use that section command. So it's really, really helpful when you're trying to add context to particular string searches within your configuration. All right, tip number six. This one is going to help you out when you want to go back and you want to see what commands you've uh, already used within uh, the device since you've been logged into it. And, and so that's the show history command. It's going to show you everything that you've typed in. Um, there is a limit. It defaults to 10, 10 commands or your last 10 commands, but that's easily uh, configurable with a terminal history size command, which you can set that to a larger number so you can look at your history going back a, a bit further um, since you've been logged in the device. This is really helpful, um, at least for me, previously when troubleshooting uh, different types of issues and I don't remember either a command that I used uh, a little while ago uh, or if I mistyped something in a configuration I need to see specifically what that was so I can fix it, the show history command uh, will definitely help you out with that. Tip number seven. So this is one that uh, might not seem all that intuitive right off the bat, but it's going to help you out quite a bit. So normally when I'm in uh, your exec level uh, within the device, right, that would be where you can run all your show commands. So you can show your interface, show run, show whatever. Once you hop into your global configuration mode, you're going to be configuring your interfaces and other things on the switch, but you can't necessarily do show commands to look at interfaces. Well, the do command allows you to run exec level commands from within the global configuration mode. 
So that is really, really cool. So you don't need to keep moving back and forth between the two different modes. Something that's even cooler than that is if you happen to have Cisco Nexus devices, so Cisco devices that run the NXOS software, um, they just allow you to run your show commands no matter in which mode you're in. So that's really cool that they've done that with kind of the newer stuff. Um, it makes it a bit easier. But if you aren't in a shop that actually has Nexus devices uh, or you're in a shop that has both, whenever using the Cisco Catalyst devices, this do command will save you uh, a lot of time. Tip number eight deals with making sure that you are protecting your device and in doing that you want to ensure that you are logging attempts to log into your device and also successful logins to your device. So both of these commands, the login on failure log and the login on success log, um, create log entries whenever there's a successful or failed login attempt. Uh, this is really useful information. Hopefully you're sending this back to some type of centralized uh, logging server via syslog. So if it's going back to that or a sim or something like that, you can set up some alerting for whenever there's any failed login attempts to your devices, which could be um, a good thing to do from a security posture perspective. Tip number nine builds on that a, a little bit more as well. So once you're in the device, um, you might want to see who's actually logged in with you. So you can do a who command or show users. Um, this is also good if you're doing some configurations within the device and you want to make sure that whatever you're doing won't kick somebody out or overwrite some other type of configurations that they're doing. Um, it's just good best practice to do this whenever you're doing any type of authorized configuration change before you go ahead and, and make any changes. And tip number 10, this deals with access control list logging. So as we know, access control lists is our, our configurations that we apply that either permit or deny traffic either to your device or through your device. Now logging can play an important role with this um, in a couple different ways. First off, it's probably good for ACLs that you're using to apply to traffic going through your device to capture all of your deny statements. So you add a log command onto the end of your deny statements. This will help with troubleshooting purposes in the event of you're expecting server A to be able to talk to server B and it's not happening. You could then go and look at your logs and see if it's your ACL that's actually blocking traffic when you don't mean it to be doing that. The second way, which is equally beneficial and comes back again to more your security posture, is your um, access control list that you apply to your VTY lines. If you remember, your VTY lines are, uh, the, are the place where you configure how administrators are able to access your device. Um, and you can apply an ACL to those to only be able to allow your device to be connected to from certain IP addresses. Um, but a good thing to do with the, the ACL that you apply to those VTY lines is to put log statements on each of the different lines in that ACL. So that way you make sure you're keeping track of which IPs are logging into the device and which IPs are attempting to log into the device that shouldn't be logging into the device. So this is good practice, and I always do this on any switches that I build out. I always add log statements onto all of the ACLs that I attach to my VTY lines. And that wraps up our top 10 tips and tricks for Cisco configurations. But before we get right to the end, we are going to go back to our network knowledge brain gains and take a look at what the answer for the question of the day is. All right, so if we take a look and remember the original question, it was dealing with this IP network, and we were going to look to see which of the uh, answers below could be host IP addresses. 
And the correct answers are A, B, and D. It's a little bit of a confusing question um, because most people are used to looking at slash 24 networks. So that would be a 255, 255.0 network. And in those cases, we know that the last uh, octet, the IP address of dot zero and, and dot 255 can't be used. You're going to use dot zero as the network address and 255 as the broadcast address. But since this actually isn't a slash 24, right, it's actually a slash 22 um, or a 255.255.252.0. Um, that actually means that it's four slash 24s put together. And so that gives us a little bit more freedom in uh, the IPs that can be used there. So really the only one that can't be used is C. And that's because that 3.255 is the broadcast address for that subnet. So that wraps it up for our video on 10 Cisco tips and tricks for network engineers. I hope everybody enjoyed that. As always, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. Leave some comments down below on some other stuff that you'd like me to cover next time. And uh, go get after it, and I'll, I'll talk to you soon.